Hello and welcome to Mr. Linford's Math Course. In today's discussion, we're going to be continuing the talk about applications to single variable linear equations. In particular, we're going to talk about mixture problems. And we're going to see how we can solve these mixture problems using single variable linear equations. I think it would be helpful if we first take a look at an example problem of what a mixture problem is and then try to understand the general form to what's going on here. So in this problem, we're talking about making black ink. So imagine you work for a pen manufacturing company and you had to produce black ink for a black pen. Now, it's important for us to realize that the ink in modern day pens like ballpoint pens or, or gel pens, it's not 100% pure dye. By that I mean, um, really, the ink in your pen is a mixture of the dye, which provides the color, and some type of gel mixture. The reason for that is, when you mix the gel mixture together, it provides a certain thickness to the ink that allows the pen to write very smooth, and it allows for an even amount of ink to be written on, a, on paper from the pen. Now, you could imagine a pen that had 100% pure dye to it for its, right, for its, for its ink um, as like a, uh, imaginable, um, imagine like a fountain pen. Or imagine, um, you know, in like those movies like Harry Potter or in those old time uh, movies where they would write with a feathered quill. Those are writing utensils that use pure dye. Like with the feathered quill, they'd have to dip it into the pure ink to write. And fountain pens um, contain cartridges of just pure dye. The problem with having just pure dye, uh, just the pure color itself, is it's, doesn't always, it's very thin liquid. It doesn't always come out nicely. It tends to clump together. You know, there's always the, uh, the joke about uh, fountain pens bleeding in people's pockets in staining shirts or pants. So um, we tend to take ink and we mix the dye with a gel till it writes smoother. And so there's a more even amount of ink that gets onto the paper. So these three containers right here are three containers of ink solution. They contain the colored dye as well as the non-colored gel. And I'm just going to call it gel. This is the thing that thickens the ink, makes it so you can write nicely. So we're going to make black ink. Okay, pretend we work for a pen manufacturing company and we need to produce black ink. But black ink isn't really just black ink. What I mean by that is, typically, and you'll find this with um, manufacturers of pens and markers and any type of um, colored black ink, any manufacturer, you can actually do what's called a chromatography experiment at home, and you can actually separate the pigments of black ink, and you'll realize that manufacturers make black ink of all different types of colors. What they do is they take two colors, or multiple colors, I should say, and they mix them together in such high quantities that what you get looks black. So one of the ways to make black ink is you can even combine a bunch of blue and red ink together and the result looks black. So that's what we're doing in this problem. We're taking blue ink and red ink to make black ink. So that's the general idea of what's going on here. Now we need to find how many milliliters of a 40% blue ink solution must be added to 350 milliliters of a 30% red ink solution to produce 36.5% of black ink. Wow, that's a lot of information. So I took some time to actually draw out what was going on here. So when it comes to mixture problems, there's so much information, and this happens a lot in math and word problems, when you have just an enormous amount of information, it's good to draw a little diagram or a picture to, or even a table to help you understand and organize where everything is. 
So I drew these two containers. This container has the blue ink to it. It's a mixture of blue dye and gel. This one has the red ink. It's a mixture of gel and red dye. Now, we know that there are 350 milliliters in this whole container. That's a, that, that means there's a mix of the mixture of gel and red dye. In total, there's 350 milliliters. We also know that 30% of this container is the red dye. So 30% of the container is the dye, 70% of the container is the gel. Now, for the blue ink, we don't know how many milliliters there are in total. I don't know how much, how large of a quantity we have here. In fact, that's what we're trying to find, the milliliters of the blue ink solution. This is what we need to find. But we know that however much we have, 40% of it is blue dye, okay? 60% of it is the gel. Again, we don't know how much there is in total, but however much there is in total, 40% of it is made up of just dye. Now, these are gonna combine together. You can imagine that these are large drums of ink, like really large containers, and we pour them together in a big vat and mix them all together, so we get an even larger amount of black ink. Now, when we combine these together, we're going to get a larger amount of black ink. Do we know how much there is? No. It doesn't say anywhere in the problem how much black ink we make. What it does say is that however much you make, 36.5% of that is the pure dye. So what are we saying happened here? Well, First off, you have to understand that this stuff doesn't always mix right away. To mix dye and a gel or an oil together, you actually have to really shake it up and blend it up quite a lot. And in fact, that's why the um, if you look at the pens, the cartridges to pens, like a ballpoint pen or a gel pen, they're actually pressurized. So that way, um, the ink... Or the, I'm sorry, the dye and the gel don't separate. They stay blended together. So what's going on here is that when we poured these two containers together, the dyes combined with each other to make the black dye, and then these gels combined together to make all of this gel quantity. That's essentially the picture of what's going on here. What we need to do is come up with some equation to find our unknown amount. Our unknown amount is how much of this quantity is there. How much blue ink is there? How much of a combination of dye and gel do we have? How many milliliters? Since we don't know what that is, that is going to be our X, okay? So X is however many milliliters there are of the blue ink. Um, we also don't know how much there are there is of the black ink. How can we represent how much black ink there is? We don't know how much blue ink there is, but we know there's 350 milliliters of red ink. They're going to combine together. So how can we represent the black ink? Well we're gonna to have to represent it with an expression. X plus 350. I don't know what X is. Let's pretend, let's just say for example, it's 100 milliliters. So when I combine 100 milliliters with the 350, we would get 450 milliliters for the black ink. Let's say it was 200 milliliters. If I combine that with the 350, we would have 550 milliliters. Now let's say there's X milliliters. However much that is, it combines with the 350 and it makes X plus 350. That is how we're going to represent the total number of milliliters for the black ink. Okay? So 
what we did here was instead of having question marks drawn on our diagram of stuff we don't know, we have it represented in terms of x. So now we have a variable thrown in there, okay? Now we can go ahead and start building our equation. Now, I'm going to give you a hint for setting this up. I would write an equation that describes what happened with the dies. I would write an equation that talks about how the amount of dies combined together to make black die. So what I mean by that is we just said this black die and this red die are going to mix together to make the black die, while these gels mix together to make the total amount of gel. So let's go ahead and let's write an equation that shows that the blue dye is going to combine with the red dye to make the black. And I hope this is making sense. This is kind of like one of those experiments you probably did when you were a kid in elementary school where they have oil and water and they would be separated from each other because they wouldn't their densities would be different and they wouldn't mix. What we're saying here is let's figure out how many milliliters there are of this dye and how many milliliters there are of this dye to get this dye. Well, how do we go about doing that? Well, how do we go about doing that? How do we figure out how many milliliters there are right here? Can I figure out how many milliliters there are right here for the red? Hopefully you're saying, yeah, that's actually pretty obvious. There's 350 milliliters in total and 30% of it is the red dye, so just take 30% of 350. But what about for the blue? I don't know how many milliliters there are of blue, but 40% of it is pure dye. Well, how many milliliters are there in total? We say that it's X. So let's take 40% of X. We're gonna add these together to get the black ink. So this we can figure out right away. We can take 30% of 350, but I don't know what X is, so I have to represent it with a variable here. Now let's go ahead and let's figure out how many milliliters of black dye there is. So again, all I know is that I'm taking 36 and a half percent of the total amount. Well, the total amount here we said is X plus 350. And here we have our equation. This equation basically tells us take however many milliliters of blue dye there is, add it to however many milliliters of red dye there is, and you'll get this amount of black dye. So we're, we just wrote an equation that only looked at the dyes. It kind of ignored the gels, okay? Hopefully this setup is making sense to you. We can go ahead and actually solve this. And in fact, it'd be quite easy to do. We're going to just have to do a little multiplication. So let's take 350 times 0.30. So 30% 30 of 350 is 105. And that's equal to, well, we're going to distribute here to get 0 0.365 times x plus 0.365 times 350 is 127.75. And to go ahead and solve this, I'm going to move the 0.365 to the other side. And I would end up with a 0.035x is equal to, I'll subtract the 105 over, so 127.75 minus 105 is 22.75. And if I divide that by 0.035, 
Uh, I'm running out of room here, but I'll just go here and say that X is equal to 650 milliliters. That is how much ink we have of blue ink. That's how many milliliters we have of blue ink. We have 650. 40% of that is pure blue dye, but in total there's 650. So if there's 650 milliliters here, and there's 350 milliliters here, how many milliliters of black ink is there? Well, hopefully you're saying to yourself, oh, that's easy. Just add them together so you end up with 1,000 milliliters. That is the idea of what's going on here. In this mixture problem, we took two solutions, two different mixtures, and combined them together. We had to write an equation that looked at part of the mixture. Notice that our equation was based on just part of the mixture, it was based on the dyes. So that's the trick to working with these mixture problems. You need to write an equation that only deals with part of the mixture, not the whole thing. Let's work on a problem now that has a different setup than the previous problem, but let's see if we can see any similar structure in the methods that we use to solve this. So let's say that I have two compost collections. This is gonna be a gardening problem, and I am using compost to organically fertilize my plants. And let's say I have two different collections of compost, two different compost piles. One of the big things to study with compost is how much nitrogen is, the, is in your compost. So one of the piles has 15% nitrogen. That's too high. That's a, that's a bit much for what I want to, to fertilize the plants. The other is about 10% nitrogen, and that's a bit too low. So how much of the 15% nitrogen should be added to 2 pounds of the 10% nitrogen? And what we want to do is mix those together to produce 14% nitrogen mixture. So this is kind of the idea of what's going on. You want something in the middle, blend, one that's a bit high with one that's a bit low, and we'll see what we can come up with. Now, we know that for the one pile that's 10%, we want to use two pounds of that. So that was one of the key bits of information, is that we're using two pounds, okay? The other bit of key information was that we only knew the percentages of the other piles. We don't know how much there actually is of each. So for the first one, I don't know how much I have here or how much I'm going to use, I should say. All I know is that it's 15% nitrogen. And then of the 10% pile, um, I know that I'm using two pounds. So I could figure out what, how many pounds of nitrogen I have here. But for the other pile, I don't know how much I will end up with. All I know is that 14% of it will be nitrogen. And that should make sense because all I know is that I'm taking two pounds and I'm adding in some unknown amount of pounds to get another unknown amount. So let's see if we can set this problem up. Again, remember that when you're working with a mixture problem, you want to write an equation that deals with part of the mixture, okay? There's really a couple things going on in this problem. There's the part of the uh, compost that's nitrogen, and there's a part of the compost that isn't nitrogen. Those are two separate equations. So, Pick one to work with. Since we're given the nitrogen situation, and that's what we're trying to find, or we're trying to find the pounds of um, one of the compost piles, then let's go ahead and let's write an equation for how much nitrogen there is. And so what we're saying here is if you took the nitrogen of one pile and added it to the nitrogen of the other pile, you'll get the nitrogen of the third pile in pounds, how many there are. So how much nitrogen is in the second pile? Well, it's 10% of 2 pounds. That should be 
0 0.2. That's how many pounds of nitrogen there are. It's 0 0.2 pounds. Now, for the first pile, how many pounds of nitrogen are there? Well, we're not sure. All we know is that whatever we do, however much pounds there are of the entire nitrogen, what we need to do is take 15% of that. So let's say that this pile was 10 pounds. Oops. So if we're saying that the pile is 10 pounds, we can take 15% of that and we would have 1.5 pounds. Let's say that it was... Oh gosh, let's try something like, oh, let's try 15. Let's say that this compost pile, we needed 15 pounds of it, and 15% of that was nitrogen. So if there's 15 pounds and 15% of that is nitrogen, then we would end up with 2.25 pounds of nitrogen. All that we're doing here is we're figuring out how many pounds of nitrogen there are, because we're told the percentage but we don't know the total amount. So we're seeing some examples where if we plug numbers in, if we just pretend we knew how much, then we could easily figure out how much nitrogen there are, there are how, much, how many pounds of nitrogen there is. Um, but we don't know the total weight. And in fact, that's what we gotta find. So we use that as x. We're gonna let that be x here. So 0.15 times x, represents, this is how many pounds of nitrogen we're gonna have from the first pile, okay? We don't know what X is, but it's just gonna be a number so that we can eventually figure out what it is. But for the time being, we just have to represent it with a variable. Now, when we add these together, we're gonna get some more pounds of nitrogen. We're gonna get, um, some mixture, and 14% of that mixture is going to be the nitrogen. So we need to think, how many pounds do we have here? Here we had 2 pounds, and we've combined that with x pounds. So how many do we have in total over here? Is it going to be a specific number? No, it's not going to be. You don't know it because you don't know what x is. So if you're adding x and 2 together, how would you know if that's a specific, what that specific number is? You don't. So the total here is we're just going to represent it as x plus 2 pounds. Again, we don't know the specific number, and that's fine. That's what we have to solve for. So the one pile's x pounds, the other pile's 2 pounds. The main pile is going to be represented as x plus 2 pounds. Now, that's the, those are the total weights, and we're taking the percentages of them to figure out how much nitrogen, and what's the weight of the nitrogens that are combining together. So, we can go ahead and simplify this. We're going to distribute the uh, 0.14 through, uh, and that should be 0. 2, 8. Now, if we went to solve this, we're going to need to isolate the x. Uh, what we can do is I'm going to move the 0.14 to the other side. So we're going to get 0.01x. I'm going to move the 0.2 to the other side to get 0.08. And that should be, when I divide both sides by 0 0.01, we should get x is equal to 8. So the amount of the first compost pile that we need is 8 pounds. We are taking 8 pounds of compost pile 1 and mixing it with two pounds of compost pile two, so we're gonna end up with 10 pounds altogether. And we can figure out how much nitrogen there is. We took 15% of eight pounds. So eight times 0.15, 
That is 1.2 pounds of nitrogen. And then we had the 10% of 2, so that's 0 0.2. And if we combine those together, we end up with 1.4 pounds. And we can check to make sure that's right by taking 14% of 10, and we'll end up with 1.4. So this works out, okay? What we're seeing here is that we can write an equation for one part of the mixture, okay? We wrote an equation for the pounds of nitrogen. That's what we're trying to find. This setup, you should see, is very similar to the previous problem setup. Here is the general, let me highlight this. Here is the general formula, or the general equation, I should say, that we used to solve this. Let's take a look at the previous one. Here was the general equation that we solved. What do you notice similar about these two? Well, hopefully you're seeing that it's the same structure to the problem. In a mixture problem, we're dealing with percentages, right? We're only working with one part of the mixture at a time, and we're dealing with percentages. So, we can think of this as pretty much saying that when we have a mixture problem, we need to first look at just one part of the mixture. In the first problem, it was how much dye there is. and the second problem, is how much nitrogen there is. So... We can say that we need to find the concentration of mixture one. So whatever you're finding in, in terms of this equation, whether it's dye or nitrogen, figure out what that concentration is for the first one. And we add that to the concentration of mixture two. And we're going to then get how much concentration there is for mixture three. Concentration for mix three. So that's the general idea. In the first equation it was the blue dye plus the red dye got us how much black dye there is. In the second equation, it was the nitrogen in pile 1 plus the nitrogen in pile 2 got us the total nitrogen for the combined pile. So, how do you find the concentration? You take the weight or the quantity. Let me say that instead. Take the quantity... of mixture one, how much there is in total, and you take the percentage of that. So in the last problem, we would take the total amount of the weight, and we would figure out what the percentage of that was. We would then also do the same thing for the second problem, take the percentage of the quantity two, Um, how much there was of the second mixture. And then that would give us, um, for quantity, or for, the, for the third concentration, we would take the percentage of quantity. I'll abbreviate that. Oh, that looks terrible. Let's try that again. Quantity three. So... This is the same setup that we had in both problems. In both settings, we had to take we had to figure out how much specific milliliters there were of dye or specific weight of nitrogen. Now, we're going to keep using this setup anytime we do a mixture problem because what we're saying is is we're trying to find 
not the total quantity weight or the total quantity, but instead part of it. We only want a percentage of the quantity, okay? That's because we're only working with part of the total quantity in a mixture. So this is the general setup. Oftentimes, you won't know what one of the weights is, what one of the quantities is. You won't know how many milliliters there are in total or what the total pounds are. So instead, you have to let that be x. And let's say you're given the other one. If one is x and the other, let's say, we were told is 8, then the total is just x plus 8. These are some examples that we've seen where um, you know one of the weights, you don't know the other, and you don't know what the total one would be. So the only way you could do it is represent it algebraically with variables. Now, let's say you then knew different information. Let's say you knew the total weight was 10. How can you figure out a way of representing the partial of the, or the other weights? You know, you combined, in the first problem, milliliters of ink together. In the second problem, you combined pounds of compost together. Let's say that when you combined everything, other mixtures together, you ended up with 10. Maybe that's 10 pounds, 10 liters, whatever. Well, the other quantities, you could represent one as x, because you don't know what that is. But how would you represent the other one? The temptation is always to put, oh, well, it's y. But careful, we're only working in single variable here. We don't know how to work in multivariable yet. So instead, think of it like this. If the total weight is 10, like the total quantity, once we're done combining everything together, we have 10 units. Then if one of the units we have is x, then the other should be 10 minus x. This is the difference. The difference. So hopefully that's making sense to you. Again, we're not sure of the exact number. You're not always going to be told that information. So you need to think, okay, how can I represent that? This formula, or this setup, I should say, is going to be the setup for every type of mixture problem. So you can use this form for any mixture problem that you come across. If you have any questions about these problems, or want to talk more about them, or get more of an explanation of what's going on, or if you have any comments about the video, please let me know. My email is klinford, that's K L I N. F O R D at WCCnet.edu. And until next time, take care.